All the food have a story. Flavors can talk to you. It's a great way to discover a different culture. So multicultural, we can literally travel around the world, like within our streets. People living in harmony together is the best thing ever. You can see all the value of the different culture. You're giving people something a little bit more than food. You're giving people a sense of pride in their community. What's great, Tom? What's the very been being good to me? Fellas, what we do it? I'm getting hungry in a minute. We we'll haven't eaten anything. Yeah. It's really nice to look after each other. People know each other by name, like a country town. When I walk down the street, I call it the Brad Pitt effect. It's when you walk down the street and you know so many people saying hello to you. I just really feel like Brad Pitt. <laughs> And Chinese growing up, especially in Asian culture, your parents don't tell you they love you. What they do is they make a bunch of food for you. It's kind of like, yeah, I want to do the same thing, but for everyone. Put a bit of love on the table. Uh, my name's Alex Jun. I'm the head chef of Chibog in West Footscray. I fell in love with Filipino food from my first trip to the Philippines back in 2016. For me, I find Filipino food to be the soul food of Asia. It is like completely unique, rich and delicious, the flavors get gone. You get like a certain amount of comfort from it. Like when you eat it, you feel good, you feel warm. Like, you know, you feel real nice. Well, it's a very sustainable cuisine as well. I mean, they're trying to use every cut of every meat. So, you know, when you walk down the streets in the middle of the night and you just smell like this barbecue going off and people having beers, it's a good feeling. Chibog is a Filipino restaurant where we do very traditional flavors with a modern twist. So putting a lot of love, a lot of care, a lot of time into each dish. As fresh as possible, just straight onto the table. Whether it's like a late night sisig that's like really heavy and rich. Oh, we put quite a bit of sauce on top, like we doused that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Something like a kinalao ceviche, which is really light and airy. Trying to get these dishes recognized as something special. We're also a gastropub, so we serve cocktails and drinks. So the cocktails are Filipino inspired, so we have like ube cocktail. We Joy old fashioned. Just a lot of like Asian flavors. With the Ube cocktail, the color is like a vibrant purple. It's super delicious. The whole environment is just full of life and it's always buzzing. 1985, March 28th. It's the date that my parents came to Australia. It reminds me of having the opportunity to live here and grow up here. Melting pot cultures is the most amazing thing about Australia. It's so multicultural. Like we can literally travel around the world, like within our streets. Yeehaw, you know. There's Ethiopian, there's Vietnamese, there's Filipino. <laughs> You've literally got like every culture of like a restaurant in Footscray. February 2020 was when we officially opened up to the public. Just before lockdown. With the lockdown radiuses, like our main customers were just people who lived down the street and want to support local, which was just amazing. And without them, we wouldn't have been able to survive. With my parents, they have been here a few times, and I think the one way of them saying, yeah, it's amazing, is actually finishing everything on the plate. So when I saw that for the first time, I think that really hit home. That's one of the best feelings in the world you have.
For me, food is everything. In a southern Italian family, it's basically all about food. <laughs> I was brought up with a high standard of cuisine. I thought anyway. <laughs> Angela and I moved into Yarraville in 2005. The area had a buzz about it. I loved it because it's so Italian. It's known as a village and it certainly is a village. People know each other by name. It really is like a country town. I said to my wife, you know, Yarraville needs a good old fashioned Italian restaurant. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. I wanted something that's timeless. Cafe Taroni is a traditional southern Italian restaurant. When we first set up, Joe's mum and his sister were pretty instrumental in helping with the menu. Our tiramisu is probably our signature dish. It's my mother's recipe. It's a traditional tiramisu done in a tray and done with authentic ingredients. I buy all my stuff locally. I think it's important. Being here this long, I'm always a fan of fellow traders. You know, we all have the same problems and often the same customers. The Sun Theatre is the lifeline of our little village. We've got people that go to that beautiful cinema and then we'll come here for a meal afterwards. It's really nice to look after each other. There's a lot of community within these walls. Customers have come in, they're always looking for Joe. Well, they come for our food. <laughs> I'm, I'm just there all the time. <laughs> I like to think I'm a, probably a traditional host, yeah? I'm sort of the owner that's there. They know me as Joe Taroni, even though that's not my surname. <laughs> our customers are like our family, and we've had customers that have been here from day one. We've seen little kids grow over the years. We've seen people get married and then come back with kids. When we were renovating, Joe and I went to a local petrol station one day, filled up the car, and Joe saw an old Pinocchio in the petrol station, and that was our first Pinocchio. It felt like every year someone came from overseas and brought me a Pinocchio. So now we've got like 16 Pinocchio. <laughs> they come back and they say, here's a, here's a souvenir, put it somewhere. And I've got plenty of places to put it. Wherever there's a shelf, there's a piece of someone's memories from their family in Taroni. got so many culture in Melbourne West, not only Vietnamese. My neighbor is Maltese. The next door, she is Aborigine. Behind me is a Greek man. And around here, many African group, people living in harmony together is the best thing ever. You can see all the value of the different culture bringing in. Food is the most important part to share in this, because you see, when it comes to food, that brings people together. Hi, my name's Leo. I and my family running this restaurant, Blue Bamboo, for the last six years. Bamboo really to us is very meaningful. When we see bamboo, we feel like we're at home. Before, so many people tried to open the business here, but by closing down very short time. We take a risk. When we first open it, we put all the lights up and then it brightened up the place a bit and people start to come and pray. Usually in my kitchen, I cook with my mom. She is my teacher as well. If I make a mistake, she will help me to fix the mistake for me. So that's why I feel confident. 
and I'm really happy to work with her. She learned from my grandmother, a chef cook in Vietnam. She passed on her recipe to me. My neighbor, people around here, they, they love the food here. When I came here, I don't think I will be a chef because I have no idea how to set up the restaurant. I'm nervous. I just think, oh, I have to bring Vietnamese culture to Facebook. Me and my dad start to set up together for a month. Make a table, chairs, and decorate around like my home country. After the busy day, when the restaurant closed, I come to look after the garden. I feel relaxed and I feel I'm in Vietnam. No more stress. When I feel happy, I think the customer will be happy. <laughs> My family, our family, are the hardest working people. I just can't believe it if my mom, with her age, and also the fire and the heat, but still like working and keep working. Even in the day off, she still come here, prepare the food for the next day. I work here seven days a week. Actually, not hard for me. When I come here, I have my family here as well. Sometimes I feel tired. They give me the energy to make me stand up and do it again. Food scray is like a little Ethiopia. Andy has always had that huge presence in the community. He was always the go-to person for any issues you had or if you needed a piece of advice. It's like a magnet. <laughs> it's my nature. Helping, that's my passion. If you walk down the street with Abdi, it doesn't take five minutes to get to the bank, really. It takes half an hour. Every step you take, someone will stop him and go, Oh, Abdi, how are you? And how is your family? And how is your mom? It takes me back home. My name is Rosen. I run Contra Cafe with my husband Abdul. It is an Ethiopian restaurant in the heart of Footscray. It started as a jewelry and craft shop. That was about 15 years ago. Abdi always had a really good palate. People kept coming and asking him where they should eat in Footscray. Even the restaurants around us would come and ask Abdi to go and taste a new food they had made. So the idea grew that, you know, we might as well have our own restaurant with the tastes we like. If you want to cook Ethiopian food, the main thing, the main backbone is the spice. Food for Ethiopian without spice is nothing. So my mom preparing all the spice back home all the way in Ethiopia and send it to me and I cook perfect food. The customer, when they eat it, they get the real taste. It's a memory. It's important for us. Ethiopians are very proud of their coffee traditions. So we do roast the beans in-house and then we serve you the coffee with incense burning. To push away the bad spirit means you bless each other, you love each other. Coffee solves problem if people understand it. You're drinking coffee, automatically you start talking. You share, you have connection. I love my family. The singing I got it from my brother. Whenever we cook, he loves singing. So yeah, he gave us beautiful love. And uh, yeah. I was a refugee in Kenya for almost five years and because of uh, political reasons. So I left Ethiopia. They call it Kakuma Camp, border of Kenya. 
we stay there very, very hard. That's why I call my two brothers my kids. So I need to cook. I learn. Refugee camp, you have a tent. When you have cooking, you do it on the floor. It's a small stove. So I remember that. Yeah, that's a beauty part. I know you. When I cook, uh, remind me that beautiful time. All the food have a story behind it. Flavors can talk to you, and it's a great way to discover a different culture. For me, the passion just comes from the joy that you see when people eat. Maybe because I am Chinese, I always think food should be shared. So for me, food in general is about sitting down and taking the time. I was born in China, Shanghai, and we migrated here as a family when I was 10. Being just a typical family in China, my parents, they were just very comfortable. And then coming here in a new environment, suddenly it changed the dynamic. I think the language barrier affected their confidence a lot. It almost feels like me living a life that is a lot more assimilated than my mum. I was a dentist. I was building my career and I'll tell her about it, but she's looking in from the outside a bit. Opening up a restaurant has been something that sat in the mind of my mum and I for a long time before we did it. She used to own a little noodle box shop and then she sold it and never really getting any good ideas of what she might do next. I was looking around for something and I was feeling a bit stuck. But then one day I called my mum and I said, hey, I saw this place that looked available. It's in a really good spot. After that, everything just started happening. Chinese food, especially dumplings. It was more like fast food in Melbourne. There is so much history and there is so much art in Chinese food. I wanted to create an environment that really sets the scene and invites people to take the time and sit down and enjoy it. Our dumpling artists, they are just amazing. When people walk past our window, so many people love watching. When they're doing it, they're doing it so effortlessly. I think we're all kind of a bit captivated whenever we see someone that is an expert. The way we run Chi Bao is we try to do what we do best. I manage the front of house, and I manage how we present the food, and my mom manages the kitchen. Working so closely with my mom, I think the project itself gave us a lot of meaning. We've had so many fights and <laughs> healthy ones, I like to think, healthy conflict. For me, seeing her working and being a leader again and being so great at being a leader, it's just very nice, it's just very fulfilling. Being part of Yarraville, there is this infectious nature. Everyone was there to look after each other. Well, I always felt Yarraville had a lot of diversity. Chibao was an opportunity almost for me to show off my culture. It just feels like you're giving people something a little bit more than food. You're giving people a sense of pride in their community. What really makes Food Square special for me, it's the people. When I walk down the street, I call it the Brad Pitt effect. It's when you walk down the street and you know so many people saying hello to you, you know, I just really feel like Brad Pitt. <laughs> That's the amazing thing about Food Square, you know, you can travel the world. 
different food, the sound, the smell in the streets. Definitely food is a great part of the French culture. Food is love. One of my earliest memories uh, with food is actually growing up in a little town next to Nice in the south of France, living with my grandmother and we would cook together on Sundays. The attention to details, the love she put into it, the way she always asked me to try the food and say, please tell me, is it ready? You know, I felt very special, it was empowering. When people come to small French bar, they should definitely expect to have a good time. It is compulsory. I am a little bit of an entertainer. I try to be. Joie de vivre and a little je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I really wanted to squeeze that sentence in, sorry. When you come to the restaurant, you might find surprise and there's no commercial kitchen. You actually can see me cooking from A to Z. The lucky one who sit at the bar often, I feed them with a little spoon. How do you possibly cook steak in such a small kitchen? Aha, I got a really good oven. I, I'm not giving you all the secrets straight away, come on. <laughs> all my produces uh, come from France, mostly. All the wine is French. All the cheeses are French. All the other produce I shop locally to the food square market. We have a very limited menu, and I always try to come up with specials, get their creativity when I go to the market. The inspiration behind this bar mostly came from my grandmother. But my dad, who came for the opening of the restaurant, he built this metal artwork, and he actually designed the logo for us. He's now passed. That's a dear souvenir, a dear memory of my dad for me. Pride is often an emotion that I don't allow myself to have, but looking back, it's a, it's a pretty good achievement to have a, such a good reputation. In the name of my family, it's really important to me. Hopefully they're all watching me from wherever they are, up in the sky, and they, they are proud themselves. Since I can remember, there was Charlie's Pizza in Footscray, the original. It's just like a piece of nostalgia, because you walk in, the interior has not changed, like clearly from the 70s, and then Charles is always there. It's this old Italian flamboyant sort of character. He's got a lot to do with how Footscray is. Where did you get these guys from? <laughs> Two dollar shop. What's great, Tom, was a very spingo to me. And I remember kids coming out of school to have a piece of pizza and a can of coke for a dollar. The world changed. What's great, that she make a great improvement. New Foot Scray station, it's something extraordinary. They'll bring Foot Scray up to the stars. Italy was just a dream now. Come here when I was 13 years of age. And then Charlie Pizza from 1974. I was 22 and I'm still here. Oh, I love pizza, of course. My grandmother used to make in a wood oven, you know, the ascachada. Hey, can be that. That's the original thing. I try not to lose that tradition. Fellas, what are we doing? I'm getting hungry in a minute. You want to eat anything? Pizza shop, you got to have it in your blood. Yeah. That was involved. They helped me out with the kitchen food, sauces, probably I could never done it 
to the earth. But when he passed away, but that was my strength. I still got a photo of me and my dad in the front here. When I walk in, I think he's a protector. I learned a lot from that. And uh, what we got here is what we had the original. I got some other from when I started 47 years ago. But that's why they never make the sermons again. <laughs> never run out. In 47 years, I took six weeks off. I had to ring up every in the morning and night. If I'm not here, I'm missing it. This is my life. It has to work some days away. Tell me, I can help you. How long I can do, I'm not sure. Break. Sit down for a minute. Wow. I'm tired. So if I can reach 110, I'm happy. <laughs> Should be enough. You know, this sort of wall my bike, I got uh, 10 rolls to do my home. So when I retire from here, I have a little bit from, from Chalice there. Ouch.